I have in the past on this show given John Oliver a bit of a hard time. And it's easy to give him a hard time, seeing as he is such a smarmy, insufferable little British Muppet. But my biggest issue with John Oliver isn't that he is an annoying, smug bastard. It's that he's an annoying, smug bastard who thinks that his own IQ is about 40 points higher than it really is. He makes very lame and very trite arguments that, to the suggestible viewer, pass for clever and intelligent because he has a live audience of trained SEALs applauding the whole time. He also spends a lot of time making his lame and trite arguments. You know, he harps on one subject for almost half an hour, which tricks his gullible fans into thinking that he's being thorough. They see that he has a 25-minute monologue on a certain subject, and they figure that it must be like the definitive smackdown on that topic because it's 25 minutes long. What they don't realize is that he's actually just restating the same shallow, dubious premise over and over again for 25 minutes. This is how he dupes the credulous rubes among us, which is a problem because there are a lot of credulous rubes among us. So when I heard that John Oliver took on the issue of homeschooling in one of his most recent shows, I expected his rant to be incredibly dumb and misleading, because they always are. But then I watched it, and I discovered that it's even worse than I assumed. As always with John Oliver, you'll find his monologues less and less persuasive the more personally knowledgeable you are about the subject. And we have been homeschooling our kids for nearly a decade, so it landed especially flat for me. But I'm going to go through the monologue in extensive detail so that you can hear it for yourself. Unlike John Oliver, I don't believe in cherry picking. So we're going to go through this. Now, Oliver's basic position is that there isn't enough regulation on homeschooling parents. He insists that a large number of us are abusive and negligent and stupid, and we need greater oversight to make sure that we are teaching our children in a way that the state finds acceptable. Actually, John Oliver wants to make sure that we're teaching our children in a way that John Oliver finds acceptable. But it just so happens that John Oliver's views and priorities are indistinguishable from the state's. He has paid millions of dollars a year to say things on camera, yet he never says anything that any generic bureaucrat wouldn't say. He just uses a little bit more profanity when he says it. Don't take it from me, though. Um, let's dive in. Watch. We're going to talk about homeschooling. During the pandemic, many parents were suddenly forced to do it. And while some struggled, others like this family absolutely thrived. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now you know your A, B, C. That is clearly excellent, but it's also, it is also a pretty mean way to make other parents look like total sh**. Okay, now, now this is how Oliver begins the segment. He gives props to some homeschooling parents so that he has licensed to spend the next 20 minutes accusing the rest of us of being Nazis and child abusers. But keep in mind that this is what Oliver considers to be clearly excellent homeschooling. Shooting a TikTok video of your kids dancing to an ABC rap when at least four of those kids are obviously way too old to still be reviewing the ABCs at all is what qualifies as homeschooling so magnificent, John Oliver says, that it makes other parents, quote, feel like shit. That's something to remember as Oliver begins giving examples of what, in his mind, qualify as laughably awful homeschooling. Also, you know, if you're the cynical type, you may have already noted that Oliver's example of good homeschooling comes from a black family. And uh, you might say to yourself, well, of course, yeah, that's, that's what he would do. And yes, you're right. That is totally intentional. Throughout the monologue, he gives three examples of sympathetic homeschool families, and they're all black. Um, all the examples of bad homeschoolers, on the other hand, are white. That is how utterly predictable and contrived all of this is. With that, let's continue. And you may have heard a stereotype of homeschoolers being Christian conservatives who object to what kids learn in public school environments. And I admit, those people do exist. Take this man who offers this pretty shaky rationalization for pulling his kid out of school. I think the type of content on what they're teaching about sex or anal sex, that my third grade daughter should not be in a classroom where a teacher or someone else is teaching her about that. And that was your experience in school? I threw, threw friends in other spots that had been kids at those ages, because mine was only in first grade when we pulled them. Well, that sounds like total b <laughs> Although I guess I do basically agree with him there. Things that are definitely not happening should continue not to happen. Now, here we have, of course, a patented John Oliver tactic, which is scoffing in place of an actual argument. 
This is all Oliver will do to even acknowledge the concerns over sexual, sexually inappropriate subject matter in public school, despite the fact that these concerns are a major primary driving force behind the growth of homeschooling. So you would think that he would spend a little bit more time on it. But Oliver simply declares that all of those concerns are, quote, total and moves on. You notice what he doesn't do? He doesn't go into any specific detail or any detail at all about the actual content of public school comprehensive sex ed curricula. You know, he doesn't say, that's b Here's what sex ed classes are really teaching. He doesn't do that because he knows that if he provided that kind of context, it would undercut his point instead of proving it. He knows that there are a great many sex ed courses in public schools, like the one co-sponsored by Planned Parenthood for kids aged 11 to 13 and recently highlighted by The Daily Signal, that among other things, lists among its course objectives that it wants to, quote, normalize masturbation. Now, John Oliver doesn't want to say, hey, you dumb parents, take it easy. All the schools want to do is talk to your 11-year-old about masturbation. He doesn't want to say that, so he doesn't say it, but that's essentially his message. There are, of course, a great many specific examples like this of comprehensive sex ed classes in high school, middle school, and even, even elementary school that cover all kinds of sexually explicit topics that no sane parent wants some strange adult talking to their kids about. There are also the pornographic books that are offered to students in schools all across the country, books like Gender Queer. Uh, and that's a book that discusses and shows images of oral sex, masturbation, sex toys, etc. And you don't have to take it from me that genderqueer is in schools all around the country. Take it from the leftists who have conniption fits and start screaming about book burning if you try to remove that book and those like it from the classroom. Speaking of which, Ron DeSantis banned lessons about gender identity and sexuality for kids in pre-K through third grade. And the left, again, exploded with rage. John Oliver says that it's total b that any schools are teaching those kinds of subjects to kids that young. Well, if that's the case, then why did his own side cry out in horror when DeSantis banned discussions that Oliver claims aren't happening anyway? Now, these are questions that Oliver doesn't want you to ask. Instead, you just clap along and laugh at his crappy jokes and don't think too deeply about any of it. The ceiling of how good homeschooling can be is admittedly very high. But the flaw of how bad it can get is basically non-existent. Because to an extent that you may not realize, in many parts of the country, homeschooling is essentially unregulated, which can result in enormous damage. So given that, tonight, let's take a look at homeschooling. And let's start with the fact that there is a lot that we don't know about homeschooled kids, from exactly how many there are to what they are learning. When I said there are around two million of them, the reason that's an estimate is that, depending on the state, homeschool families might not have to report what they are doing at all. In these 26 states, parents simply have to file a notice once a year with officials to let them know that they are homeschooling their child. In these 13, they only have to file a notice once with no requirement to check in ever again. And in the remaining 11, they don't have to notify anyone at all. Oh dear God, can you imagine the horror? You mean to tell me there are potentially millions of parents out there who are you know, talking to their kids and teaching them and guiding them and telling them things without providing the state and John Oliver with a full written account of everything they're saying? I mean, it's almost like these families believe they should have privacy and self-determination and freedom. How presumptuous of them. How dare they? You can't just go teaching stuff to your own children, especially if you haven't cleared it with John Oliver yet. John Oliver will decide what you're allowed to say to your own kids in your own home. Thank you very much. After all, as he argues, many of these parents are providing inadequate educations to their children. Here is one parent enthusiastically explaining how he taught his kids science. I can't tell you how many times, um, you know, in my home, in our kitchen table, we've dissected, you know, sheep eyeballs or uh, frogs. Uh, <laughs> kitchen, kitchens are great labs <laughs> for this kind of thing. Where does somebody, so where does together... somebody get a sheep eyeball? <laughs> well, John, you can just Google sheep eyeball for homeschoolers. I didn't There's know that. There's lots of people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. First, are kitchens the best lab for this kind of thing? I think probably labs are the best lab for this kind of thing. I'm just like, maybe don't go dissecting sheep eyeballs in the same place where you cut olives for salad. <laughs> yeah, you idiot homeschoolers. I mean, don't cut into the carcasses of dead animals in your kitchen. John Oliver would never do that, which I guess means he's never made any meat dish at all in his life. I mean, I've cut into the raw flesh of cows, chickens, pigs, deer, turkey, other animals in my kitchen. I didn't realize the kitchen was a place just for slicing olives, you dork. 
Now, I will say that I, I certainly won't be accepting any dinner invitations from John Oliver. First, because I'll never receive one. Second, because he's apparently a vegetarian. And third, uh, because he evidently doesn't realize that you can use soap to disinfect your cooking surfaces. But the real point is that Oliver is inviting us to laugh at a homeschool dad who's obviously going to great lengths to provide a very thorough scientific education to his children. Like, this should be an example of one of the good homeschoolers. But this is Oliver's example of a bad homeschool education. The ABC rap was a good example. But this guy who's doing uh, dissections with his, with his you know, actual uh, biology classes with his, uh, with his kids, that's, that's a bad example. If you needed more evidence that this guy is a clown who shouldn't be taken even remotely seriously, well, there you go. You know, you heard me talk about how important it is to have a VPN to protect your online privacy, but choosing a VPN you trust is equally as important. I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. Here's why. ExpressVPN doesn't log your online activity. Lots of cheap or free VPNs make money by uh, selling your data to advertisers, but ExpressVPN doesn't do this. They even developed a technology called Trusted Server that makes their VPN servers incapable of storing any data at all. ExpressVPN also now uses Lightway, a new VPN protocol they engineered to make uh, user speeds faster than ever. ExpressVPN is so easy to use, you don't need any technical skills to get set up. Just fire up the app, tap one button to connect, and that's it. Even your grandparents could do it. Even I can do it. That's how easy it is. Protect yourself with the VPN that I use and trust at expressvpn.com slash Show. Use my link, expressvpn.com slash Show to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash Show. Somehow, it gets worse. It is absolutely a parent's right to educate their child with religion if they so choose. But the quality of some of these books can be troubling. For instance, one current Abeka history book says that the beginning of the 20th century witnessed a cultural breakdown that threatened to destroy the very roots of Western civilization. The cause of this dissolution was an idea or philosophy known as liberalism. <laughs> Meanwhile, a workbook from ACE celebrates the Confederate General Robert E. Lee as a devoted Christian who practiced his Christianity in all his dealings with others. Uh, yes? What's your point? Both of those statements are true. At the very least, they are intellectually defensible perspectives. But Oliver, again, simply scoffs at them and in the process inadvertently proves why homeschooling is so important in the first place. He believes it is an objective and self-evident fact that liberalism has been an unquestioned force for good in the world, and that, and that Confederates were all cartoon villains fighting for nothing more than the continued subjugation of black people. He's not even smart or introspective enough to realize that his views on, that, on those topics are subjective. So when his subjective views are taught as fact in public school, and they are, he sees no legitimate reason for anyone to object. Indeed, anyone who does object is obviously a Nazi, and he makes that connection explicit. Even that is a preferable alternative to the single worst homeschool curriculum that we found, whose creators excitedly promoted it on a podcast. We are so deeply invested into making sure that that child becomes a wonderful Nazi. And National by Sorry. homeschooling, yeah. we're going to get that done. Well, that is terrifying. Now, you should know that Oliver actually lingers on these Nazi homeschoolers for multiple minutes. He dedicates a sizable chunk of his monologue to this podcast nobody's ever heard of or listened to, and this one random whack job who represents at most maybe, I don't know, 0.0000001% of homeschoolers, if that many. He can't begin to engage with the actual arguments for homeschooling, the reasons that the, the vast majority of homeschool parents would actually give. So instead, he draws our attention to the most outlandish, obscure outlier he can possibly find. Now, Oliver may be a pedestrian midwit, but he certainly at least realizes that the number of homeschool parents who want to turn their kids into, quote, wonderful Nazis is not large enough to fill a school bus, much less warrant a mention during this segment. But he throws them in there anyway as a means to of, of blatant emotional manipulation and to set the stage for this. Deregulating homeschooling doesn't just eliminate safeguards against parents who are bad teachers. It also eliminates them against parents who are bad people. For all the HSLDA's talk of parental rights, it's worth remembering Elon Musk is a parent. O.J. Simpson is a parent. Darth Vader is such a parent, he made it part of his fancy name change. The point is, having a child does not inherently make you virtuous. 
And one of the key problems here is child welfare laws were written before homeschooling was legal in all 50 states. So they rely heavily on the premise that a child is going to be in school and seen by other adults. Yeah, Elon Musk is a parent. I mean, you wouldn't want Elon Musk teaching. You wouldn't want a guy who's building rocket ships going into space teaching your, your kids, right? Obviously, a third grade science teacher is better equipped than Elon Musk to teach science. Obviously. So there it is. Homeschool is a cover for child abusers, he contends. Uh, many homeschool parents are using homeschool to hide the abuse they're inflicting on their children. Because of this, he argues, there should be all manner of regulation and monitoring and background checks imposed on all parents who wish to educate their own children. He, he says that we should all be um, screened for red flags, among other measures. Now, it's true, of course, that some parents are scumbags who abuse their kids. It would follow that a certain portion of those scumbags, a small minority, are probably homeschoolers. But it does not follow that all parents who homeschool should therefore be treated as suspected child abusers. You know, homeschool aside, the sad reality is that a certain portion of parents will use the physical privacy of their homes as a forum for inflicting all manner of abuse on their children. But it doesn't follow that all families who insist on privacy in their homes should be treated as suspicious. Nor does it mean that locking your front door is a red flag indicating that you're likely abusing your children. Now, I acknowledge that a minority of awful parents do terrible things to their kids, but I will not tolerate the state treating me like I'm one of those parents when I'm not. See, this is not a hard concept to understand, or at least it shouldn't be. Besides, John, the abuse problem cuts both ways. Yes, some parents are abusive. Also, some teachers are abusive. Not just some, many. In fact, the Department of Education's own study on this subject found that one in 10 Public school students are targets of sexual misconduct by school staff. One in 10. That is the Department of Education. That is their number, not mine. That works out to millions of victims at school. Now, Oliver says that school is a safeguard against abuse, but forgets to mention that for millions of children, school is the place where the abuse occurs. Now, this is a common theme. He talks about the failures and pitfalls of homeschooling, but never acknowledges any of the failures and pitfalls of public schooling. He tells us about what he considers to be the poor education provided by homeschool parents, but doesn't say anything about the fact that large percentage of public school kids aren't learning, learning much at all. A recent report in the Scientific American revealed that two-thirds of kids in this country, most of them public schooled, can't read fluently. According to the NAEP, only a third of eighth graders are proficient in reading. In other subjects, the, the picture is even more grim. It's well known that a significant preponderance of American adults are shockingly ignorant about geography, history, civics, not to mention math and science. Most adults today were public schooled, and yet nobody would deny that we're surrounded by morons. I mean, the proof is all around us. Look at the poll released this summer, finding that 40% of Americans don't even know why we celebrate July 4th, for instance. And we could go on and on with examples like this. It's the world that public school has created. And this is another major reason why parents are pulling their kids out of the system, because the system is failing in its basic responsibility to actually educate the next generation of Americans. Oliver doesn't grapple with that, doesn't even so much as acknowledge it. Instead, he says this. The fact is teachers serve multiple functions at school in addition to education. They watch out for signs of abuse, they chaperone school events, and they pretend not to know why Ellie won't sit next to Rachel, Rachel won't sit next to Kelsey, Kelsey's not talking to Ethan, even though Ethan's having a joint birthday party with Kelsey's brother Bryce, who just happens to be Rachel's boyfriend since last period. And they do all of that while also trying to teach long division. Teachers are superheroes who should make a million dollars a year. There you go. Homeschool parents are Nazi child abusers, and public school teachers are superheroes. Never mind that they're churning out millions of kids who can't read or perform basic arithmetic or point to South America on a map. They're superheroes. That's it. Please clap. John Oliver has once again demonstrated that he has the intellectual depth of a piss-tainted children's wading pool. And we haven't even gotten to the worst argument he makes against homeschooling, which he saves for the very end. Listen. In a perfect world, we'd make sure that homeschool kids were both safe and actually receiving a functional education. And there are smaller organizations like this one pushing for those sort of changes. But at the 
barest minimum we could require in all 50 states to register a child as homeschooled so there's at least a record that they exist. That is how low the bar is here. Yes, a record that they exist. Otherwise, nobody would know they exist. There would be no record of the child's existence other than the child's birth certificate and social security number and medical records and the fact that they're claimed on your taxes and several other forms of documentation. Aside from all that, aside from the fact that your child's existence is definitely already documented a dozen times over, aside from that, you need to report as a homeschooler to the state or nobody will know that your child is even a real person. Now, Oliver makes the time to convey this delusional concern about homeschooling, but dedicates no time at all to honestly engaging with any of the concerns about public schooling, which is, of course, how he approaches every issue he talks about, because he is a self-satisfied, pompous, dishonest, mush-brained prick, a man who, we can tell, was certainly not homeschooled himself, which is maybe the best argument for homeschooling that I can offer. And it's also why John Oliver is today, once again, canceled. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.